deep cut. How, yeah, how are you doing, Peter? That was a great cut. I'm, 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 uh, I'm well, man. I'm well. Thank you. Awesome. You? So, uh, you've you've been talking to James for a couple of minutes and uh, probably gathered that he is a massive Orville fan. Um, it kind of stems from his love of Star Trek. But uh, yeah. what what has the experience been making this show uh, with Seth MacFarlane behind on the um, you know helming it? Well, I mean, there's that's a really broad question. Um, I know. I mean, no, I mean that's 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 <laughs> that's that's fine um, because uh, there's lots of answers to that question, which is which makes it great. And um, uh, you know, as a as an actor, um, I come. Primarily, uh, well, I've been a professional actor since 1988. And I say professional, mm -hmm. meaning like that's the first time I was paid uh, to be an actor. Um, I mean, I was doing plays and stuff like that before in, 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 in high school. Well, actually, right out of high school is when I started being paid to, to be an actor. And um, got my equity card and, and grew up pretty much on the uh, in the theater. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, and when you do a play, uh, you typically get, you know, when times were good, uh, <laughs> before the NEA completely, uh, dried up, uh, you could, you get like four weeks on average of rehearsal and then like, a about a week of tech rehearsal when you're blending like the technical, the sound and the lighting, um, together. And then you get maybe a couple of previews, you know, invited audiences and dress and then you get a nice maybe a four week run and i'm saying that to say that you get to spend you know um you know a bit of time uh developing a character even after you finished rehearsing it and tv um and film to a certain extent depending on you know the size of the role or you know, um you don't you don't really get that extensive you know um time with the character and with the Orville um, what was really wonderful um, is that I got to spend five years about you know like working on this character developing it and 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 you know it's the great thing is I, I really love science fiction and and um, and I was a template for an alien like an alien species which was which was yeah. you know a huge responsibility um, and required a lot of imagination, which all is all good, but um, it was really great to have that as a project for that long to spend that amount of time, you know, developing backstory, developing, you know, mannerism, physicality, um, sense mm. of humor, you know, like over. I mean, and that's the joy of, um, you know, a series regular on a, a you know, multi seasoned. Uh, episodic show so you know as an actor um <clears throat> it was it was very uh rich and and fulfilling you know and i can and i can, you just want to go deeper and deeper and discover more things um about this about this character and you know continue to three-dimensionalize him and flesh him out and you know spend time living in you know his uh his his, his, his shoes as it were yeah um technically you know like i've done <clears throat> a handful of uh of uh, film and tv roles like you know handfuls probably in, uh under on un, underestimate but um but, but but just you know being um series regular on a show where you're just there a lot um i learned a lot about you know um, the technical aspects of, of, of filmmaking, um, which is, you know, it's, it's tricky, you know, like there's a lot, mm -hmm. I mean, eye line, what, what side of the line are you on? What size lens is they're using? Um, you know, making like how the accuracy of, you know, hitting marks and, you know, all that stuff is incredibly important so that everybody else can do their job. You know what I mean? Like you could like they, they'll spend, you know, hours setting up a shot. And if the, the meat puppet, which is the actor comes in and can't hit their mark you know they, yeah. they have to take another take and fortunately we're working in the digital age where you know you're just filling up the card and you're not burning celluloid because you know filmmaking uh was just to be very expensive and that's yeah. a lot of pressure on the actor to get it right 
Um, and if you ask get another take, it's like, oh man, that's 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 ten thousand dollars right there. <laughs> You're asking for another take. <laughs> so this is cool. It, it um it allows you, it allows me, the actor, to to just be a little bit more comfortable, you know. So if you flub a line, you start yeah. again. You know, just understanding everything that's going on around you so that um so that so that you know everybody gets to do their work you know so um so yeah, I mean it, you know I, I, I feel like spending this much time on you know a set i mean and essentially uh season three new, new horizons we, we made like uh like 10 movies which was yeah. you know amazing um and also uh you know shooting out of order you know um over a period of two years because of covid um there's like this huge extension of of uh concentration that was you know required to be like okay so wait when and they we're shooting episode three and then we're going to jump to episode seven and then we're going to jump yeah. to episode two and so this like having like an emotional continuity um was was tricky uh challenging and and, and fun um these are all things that i love you know being you know, having things thrown at me to see, uh, you know, how you, how you, how you, how you handle it. Um, yeah. Seth is uh, a really great guy to work with and for. And I say uh, for, because, you know, he, this is his brainchild, his kind yeah. of his imagination. He uh, came up with all the names of the characters and, and kind of created this world um, and, and invited myself and the rest of the crew and cast to come and play in his imagination and you know he's a wordsmith you know like he's an incredibly talented guy all around i mean he's a he's a really uh you know uh this is a satirist and you know he you know so his his wit is is amazing um his i feel like he's on the right side of things politically and, histor and historically yeah um he actually is very passionate about you know things that are you know, facing us as a species, uh, unfortunately, um, a lot of, a lot of, you know, fuckery, excuse my, <laughs> but, yeah, um, true. so, you know, like, you know, he took on Fox news, you know, and he, and he took on the Fox network, essentially like Rupert Murdoch and all these people who are, I feel like are on the wrong side of things. Um, yeah. and didn't hold his tongue, you know, like the whole Kevin Spacey business, you know, with um, Family Guy and Stewie, like before, you know, the whole thing blew up. So he's not afraid to, um, you know, say, you know, say what he feels and, and you know, yeah. with, with, with wit and humor. Um, he's also a very, um, I think, gifted writer in that he can craft language for each character. So it's almost like, you know, because he's like a, also a talented musician and talented singer, um, and composer. Yeah. I mean, I think he can hear and he can write everything for, you know, like, I feel like Bordis has like, is sort of like a cello or a, or, or a contra bass. And, you know, Scott, he's a pick, like Scott Grimes is a piccolo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's like, a, you know, so he sure. can sort of write, you know, the right, you know, like symphonically what the characters, you know, like how it sounds. So if something doesn't sound right, it, it, it it's telling. So, yeah. um, and you know, um, good on him for venturing out away from Family Guy, American Dad, and Ted to try to tackle you know serious, you know, some 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 drama. You know, so we got a, like, mm. a nice nice dramedy going. And then you know, when he's on set with us, he's one of us. You know, we're working, and like sometimes we get in the weeds with the words, and or he'll get you know everyone's tripping over the you know trying to get it right. You know, that's the impetus is to get, you know, we'll do 10, 15 takes, you know, until it, until it sounds, until it's like, yeah, that's it. That's it. Let's just get another one for safety. And then, you know, trying to get that, another that next take is 10 more takes. So there's you know, 25 yeah. takes in, but, but he's a perfectionist, which, which I absolutely love. Um, and, and, um, you know, and, and he's a really nice guy, you know what I mean? He's, he's really, really generous and he's funny and. I mean, he's got a million and one things going on, but you'd never really know um, yeah. because you know when he, he has your attention, it's just kind of like you know he cares deeply about 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 the show and about the process of the show and all aspects of the show. So you know if things are not right or I'm like yeah, man, I don't think that 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 uh 
I don't think Bordis would say this exactly, you know, and, and have an idea. And he's like, okay, oh, yeah, let's try that. Just try that. And he's like, no, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You know, um, I mean, I got a buddy who's a, he, he's a composer for, a, at least at the time he was, I mean, for a 17 piece big band, uh, like a la, like Duke Ellington, Duke Ellington jazz band. And he's like, you know, I write these charts and I give them to the cats to play. And he's like, a good composer will only be more, uh, astounded by what comes from you know giving it to the hands of the the personnel right so you i can have this in my head and then until you give it you know like you can write these words and until you give it to the person that has to three-dimensionalize these words do you it's not until then do you really get to hear what it what it what it is you know and so mm. um you know like the you know, he has a hand in everything. He has a hand in the costume. I mean, the uh, the casting is a hand and had a hand in the, the costume design, had a hand in like the set design, the ship design, and so the and and and, and also being number one on the call sheet. So you're being in, in almost every every scene. Um, yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, and, and directing them. You know, so it's it's, it's it was it, it was all around um, truly um, amazing. And and to also like do a show that's not just so formulaic. Is actually trying to break through some, some boundaries um, in the genre, right? You know, so mm -hmm. like you know, the idea of of bringing comedy to science fiction um, is almost unheard of. You know, like um, yeah, you know, like uh, and and satirical humor too. So um, it's it's groundbreaking. I feel like uh, that way in that it's walking that line between comedy and drama, and it's you know science fiction and it's reflective of like I said, all of the cockamamie issues that we're dealing with is Americans in particular, um, human beings in general, but you know, war and peace. When will we all, when, I don't when we're going to get it, you know, I don't, maybe we're just, a, mm. I mean, I'm an optimist and a romantic, but, but the things that, that happen collectively really just break my heart, you know, and it just, yeah. it just feel like, you know, in five six million years that we're gonna they're gonna be looking at us like they're gonna be pulling us out of out of a glob of amber yeah <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like those dummies um what are they doing <laughs> they had it they had it they had yeah. it and they you know so i'm um I'm really just in a i'm not in a bad mood i mean i maybe maybe macrocosmically i'm in a bad mood um but i'm just so thoroughly disappointed and disgusted with with how we continuously, continuously shoot ourselves in the foot with mm. progress, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I just don't even, I can't even rationalize and understand um, what the direction that the Supreme Court is going with this decision today. But anyway, um, but that's, but you know, like that, that, that all feeds into the work, you know, like um, what was it, season one? Episode three of the Orville, I think this, it was called about a girl, and it was about um, gender reassignment. And this, I think we were shooting that right around the time that Bathroom Gate was happening, where you know, oh, yeah. like they were trying to, the courts were trying to decide who could use what bathroom. I mean, how an idiotic, um, you know, and just, 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 I don't know, like, I don't know. It's just so, so to, to be working on a show. Um, you know, I mean, as entertainers, like a, it's always sort of a, a, a tight rope to walk in terms of how important are we to society? You know what I mean? And I mm -hmm. guess if, if you take all the arts and culture away, then you sort of get your answer. But like while you're, you know, while we're in the midst of it, am I, you know, because my wife is a, she's a healthcare professional. I'm like, she's, she has a real job. You know what I mean? Not that I, you know, not that I don't see the value in what I do because, you know, I really love it and I, I think that I'm, you know, pretty good at it. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm like, this. How much does this really, you know, matter? And of course, it does. I know that it does. But like, it's hard to measure on a day to day, you know, um, um, when when they're, you know, like when COVID was, you know, sort of in full swing and, you know, healthcare mm. professionals and nurses were committing suicide and doctors were committing, you know, like, because they couldn't save people and they didn't know what was going on. And, um, and I'm like, but I'm an actor. Um, I, can, <laughs> I can, I can, I can, you know, I, I, it's, but, you know, what we do is so 
it's it's so hard to um, define in terms of the necessity other than escapism and entertainment. And I and I think yeah. it's I think it's beyond that. You know, I think that you know being an actor is a great uh, privilege in that we can you know transform ourselves and be every other person without judgment um, as a, and be a mirror um, for for society to reflect on it and it's it, and it's not easy at all I mean it's it's you know I, I, I tell people you know <laughs> you really got to love uh, wanting to be a conduit of information and um, you know the, the mirror of humanity in, mm. in you know the, the fame and all that is so beyond what I'm interested in um, and 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 it's when it's a job that you 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 look for more work than you work you know like yeah. you try to, and you, and to stay positive uh in the face of rejection and rejection for a myriad of reasons um you're too tall you too where that's not measured by the amount of um their talent or um uh how much time you've spent you know dedicating yourself to something that's somewhat abstract um, so you know, it's difficult for a, a lot of different reasons, but the reward um, of connecting with with and, and feeling like you're doing something is um, is is important. It's very very important to me, um, but it's it's such a strange business in that there's so many different, different so many moving parts. You know, so many people have so much uh, to say, like producers, people who are not on the front line. You know, people who are bean counters in offices, you know, like they have no concept of what it's like to wear prosthetic makeup for 14 hours a day and what that does to my skin and what that does to my, you know, like, and, or just what, what it takes. It's not, you know, it's not glamorous, this job. You know, a lot of time, I, you, you know, it's, 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 it's tedious. It's, but it's, it's for the love of it. And I just, but there's so many administrative, positions that that have a say in how the work gets done it's it's yeah. Yeah. but hello uh, things that are, no, that no, are yeah, they, yeah. happening right, on, uh, uh, on 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 not just doing you know not just saying my words you know not not, mm. not being photographed um, it's the larger, and you know, I mean, I'm just like uh, very passionate about, you know, how I'm contributing to society as a whole. So maybe we should talk about the show. I don't know. <laughs> no, this ramble on. I feel like a lot, an old a lot man. Of that, <laughs> a lot of what you what you were saying does actually tie in really well with the Orville, like. Um, I, I do think watching the show, Seth MacFarlane obviously really does want to talk about um, current affairs and what's yeah. going on in the world in his show. And that, if anything, that, that is shown a lot with your character, with Bortus in the show. I feel like uh, there are a lot of episodes that focus on on, on your character in, in particular, like, um, so like Primal Urges, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and it's... Um, Still, one of my favorite episodes of the show. Actually, I think that's a really, really terrific episode. Great performance, and uh, yeah. it's a it's a very interesting. Um, it's like I always feel like Seth MacFarlane is a, is able to do that with his shows, like kind of bring yeah. in cultural uh, affair, like actual real cultural issues and current affairs into his show, and kind of yes, yeah, as you said before, satirize them. Yeah. And um, I feel like he. He's a, he was able to do that with this show and also, in a weird way, kind of make one of the best Star Trek shows we've seen because the current state of Star Trek at the moment is a bit... I'm not sure if the people involved in Star Trek at the moment actually understand Star Trek, but I really get the feeling that Seth MacFarlane does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, I re I mean, and if, you, if you just take Star Trek as like an institution, yeah. right? You know, like, um, so science fiction... Um, you get to have your, it was the first interracial kiss um, on on television. You get really, you really get to take, you really get to take, uh, you know, take the pisses. You know, really get to yeah. like, you really get to 
stretch and explore because it's couched within this world that's not real, right? So mm -hmm. like you can get away with, because it, it's like, imagine if you will this, imagine if you will that, you know what I mean? And what does this look like if you have, you know, Captain Kirk getting down with like the green lady this week and then like the lady with four legs this week, you know what I mean? But it's like, you know, um, and I think it's indicative of the time. I feel like, like you know, that, yeah. that series really pushed the, the envelope um, in terms of possibility, because again, it's like let's imagine like what what the future like the future is limitless. It's like especially the 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 the, the, the more we you know um, detach ourselves from the, the 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 anchors that we have as a society now, like this like let our imagination run run free and be be free. Think think about what what the world looks like. Without you know, without you know, when we carbon you know emissions and what the world looks like when no one's dealing with hunger and you know what the yeah. world so sort of um, you know uh, utopic in a sense you know like we've 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 figured out some problems we solved some problems yeah. like, which is which is hopeful right um, it still doesn't mean that um, you know there aren't problems to to address but you know in terms of you know war and peace and you know, and even in the show, I mean, you know, it's it's, and I have to say, and I've said this to, you know, I brought this up. I mean, like the 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 union, the planetary union, is largely a human, um, like the 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 moral code or the moral compass is kind of based off of this human um, notion of of mor morality, right? I mean, so yeah. which is great because then you present that up a. a juxtapose that with societies and culture if they're truly alien that don't relate to our value systems um how do we still achieve coexistence right yeah. you know so i mean if the show is limited which i, I wouldn't say it's limited but how because it can't be you know like we're human beings well that's all we know right so we can only imagine yeah. what the the point of view is of another species and good on seth for for creating conflict and 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 um, because that gives us, you know, um, conflict re resolution, right? I mean, that's that's, mm. what we're, that's what we're all trying to try to see. I mean, you watch a production of Hamlet. Hamlet's not blubbering, you know, the whole time. No one wants to watch that. He's but when you watch a true tragedy, like you you watch a character struggle to win and to fight to win, even though in the face of you know incredible odds. That's what's so heartbreaking and heart wrenching and engaging is when you watch people try to win in the face of adversity. And I think that, hmm. um, and then you th you throw in some jokes, and uh, you know because the lightning because it's like you have to laugh to keep from crying. Yeah. Um, you know, so, um, so <laughs> and uh, a lot of times, you know, just to just to just to take a break because uh, you you can't just you know I mean and I feel like maybe that's which i which i'm a fan of too like i'm a fan of the dystopic future um i'm not a fan per se but i'm like i get it like blade runner makes yeah. come like the blade runner especially 2049 makes a ton of sense to me where consciousness is starting to grow in ai and self-awareness and you know i think it, it's such it's such a tragedy that um k k for a while believes that you know, he might be human and he's not, you know what I mean? And then when he finds out he's not, it's like, it's so, and so then you, you find yourself feeling empathetic for an Android. Right. I yeah. mean, and I'm like, that's, that's, you know, like makes perfect sense of the way that the world is going. And, you know, um, you know, I'm a fan, I'm not necessarily a fan of apocalyptic, you know, things, um, because I feel like, you know, I, I don't, I don't ever want to feel like, I don't know, ever want to know a world where, 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 where we're just, where, you know, the, we lost, and yeah. we Chernobyl the whole world. I mean, that. I mean, although I love those narratives, you know, like I love, um, not not. I don't know. I guess I don't say love, but like you know, you know what I mean. I mean, I'm I'm just you appreciate them. Yeah, I'm deeply okay. interested in it. You know, and yeah. I deeply and I, and especially when it's it, the attention to detail. But you know, with this show. Um, with the Orville, I mean, like, because it's not a dystopic, dystopian sort of future, we don't have to be mired, we don't have to be bogged down in, um, you know, in that, you know, sort of, uh, we can, we can, because it, it's only an hour, right? You know, we, yeah. we can, we can, 
we can get into you know other other aspects of 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 uh of uh c conflict you know like um because we're not you know like dealing with um it's removed a little bit yeah it is yeah. sort of yeah deal with the headlines yeah um, and take those on and that's still a whole lot of um you know uh, work there's still a, yeah. there's still there's still a lot to be mined even you know um if you're just sort of dealing with uh like in a you know world that's not so dystopic you know like there's mm. still a lot to be to to, to 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 mine and discover um and i think that's what makes it show great and i think that's what star trek was trying to do um originally you know what i mean yes. and so yeah. you know didn't really understand it almost maybe just until right this conversation that, that how star trek is an institution there's like another star trek or an homage to star trek or a love letter to star trek or whatever it's, hmm. it's not necessarily the show but it's like about the per se it's like the, the movement of yeah. of what the show was was doing in the scope of you know american tv uh and you know international tv at the time you know like um so i feel like it hits that mark yeah. um because it does you know it's a much more of a clearer homage to what the show with the original star trek was trying to do right? yeah and that that that's yeah that's what you you do get that feeling when you watch the show that it's it's um it's an homage but it's also it kind of ca encaptures what the original star trek series was trying to do like the essence and, of it yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and i think that's why like so many star trek fans have really gravitated towards the show and um when i mean when we heard that season three was going to be the last season <laughs> i think a lot of people yeah. were very upset so is that is that really the case then is that is that it you know i don't i don't know because again yeah. like uh the way that the tv world works is you know like it's a family guy well, yeah. I got canceled, I think, twice. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it did. And so, you know, depending on how the fans uh, react to the season, if there's a high demand, if people are like, we want more, then yeah. um, I'm, I, I would like to think that um, they will figure it out. And um, I know that Seth is still really interested in, in doing – you know, because I was I was at his house a while ago, um, and um, and he was like, "Season four, hi buddy, season four, season four. So you know, there's talk about a movie. Um, you know, like I, I I certainly hope that this is not the end, but like we like didn't it, because it took so long to renew um, to to shoot season three. Yeah. Um, you know it, it took a long time but like for lots of good reasons and for lots of reasons that were out of our control such as covid um yeah but you know it's okay buddy go over there go over there. and um thank you i'll see you in a minute <laughs> um uh who knows you know what i mean like i as again i'm just a meat puppet i don't know you know tell me i don't know <laughs> until the end and i certainly would love to do more um yeah. just watching just watching i just watched um you know uh episode four of new horizons last night and i'm like wow they're really yeah. going places that you know what i mean and then you know and then the wake up to the news this morning um i'm just like yeah this this show still has a pocket of relevancy that it's that it's operating in and it would be it'd be a damn shame honestly if it um, would be yeah if there would be if there, there'd be no more so i know that the show is very expensive to shoot um i mean the, these are all like uh you know primary considerations um who's going to pay yeah. for it um who, what what network has the money to um to fund like a 12 million dollar episode you know like what mil what network has like you know um and there were those that, that that's just the ballpark sort of just throwing it out there i know that there were yeah there were episodes that that came in uh way over that um budget wise really? uh yeah and um you know um you know so it's a very expensive show to because you, you consider like the the fx that are happening yeah you consider um the you know just the scoring of each episode i mean there's like an 87 piece 85 87 piece orchestra that's scoring every episode so you watch the, you go back and you watch 
you know, you watch the episode, you watch rewatch an episode, just listen to the music, just watch it just for the music. Yeah. Just and there's like it, every frame is well, every scene is is scored, and that's that's an enormous uh, undertaking to like mm. have that. So I mean, it's a big, big show. Um, I mean, I mean, it, it's like I said, it's we made like 10, 10 movies, um, and that's you know that's yeah, a lot. That's yeah. a lot to sustain. So I'm there. There are factors like I know that 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 I would imagine um, that um, those are that that's a factor that, that that would come into play whether there's another yeah. season. But I can I mean I, I I just think that we're just I feel like we're just getting started. We just like got into this nice groove. You know, season one people are like, well, what's this? Is it is it Family Guy in space? You know, like you know, like by the third episode they're like, no, it's not that. But what is it? You know, and then like the whole <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, monster making industry like howard Berger, and with can be effects i mean like you know again we're i mean and still trying to break out of like the bipedal alien like you know so it's like okay that's a person wearing a suit obviously but they're yeah. trying to push they'll push the envelopes with push the envelope with like a character like unk who's like this huge you yeah. know very phallic looking you know um, yeah like, that's the best way to describe yeah, him yeah <laughs> who's like uh who's like who deals with you know dirty porn you know what i mean so yeah, it's like exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, um but just trying to break through that mold of you know so people forget that these are actors in these suits yeah um, or and it, and it's not cgi right you know what mm. i mean it's like, what so it, practical normal, yeah well yeah. practical which is old school yeah. Um, and makes it kind of keeps it in that like analog kind of world, um, an accessible makes, sort of world. Yeah, it makes so, it more expensive as well to do it that way. Absolutely more expensive. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like Jim Henson, man. I mean, it's like you know, you look yeah. at the first three Star Wars, and um, you know, when they're like physical, uh, practical puppets, you know, being worked and voiced on the set while it's happening, it's completely different than. You know the next three, which are like yeah, CGI, it's, it's disconnect. You know, not yeah, that you is. an example. I mean, but yeah, I mean, and just wanting to keep that. You know, um, I mean, I could even see it going. You know, to a, a, a point like a place with mocap, right? You know what I mean? So like, um, the the work that uh, 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 Andy Circus yes does the with, Imaginarium, you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, I like that. I could see that where we could push boundaries that way too with the show. Um, I also suggested like that we do um, a in a uh, uh, an episode with puppets and like you know Avenue Q and it's a musical. You know what I mean? Like I'm just like an animated you know episode. Like I feel like there's just so many more, there's so many possibilities that it yeah. would be a shame that um, that this is the end.